last of magnolia trees still out, I thought I'd take it a little bit further. Uh, the last video I did uh, was an impressionist piece, just going out there and exploring the use of pan plasters, which I wasn't too happy with. And then I did one of the unisons, which was, let's say, a very expressionist and slightly impressionist piece. To enjoy the day, to enjoy the light, to play, yes, to capture the moment, the mood. Not to be a photographic piece, wasn't meant to be, it was just meant to, to be about the light and the colours and the atmosphere and, and the flowers themselves. Not working about photographs most of the time, but um, there's so many ways to work, isn't there? And this is the one of the reasons I'm going to take it a stage further and take one of the photographs from the other day, this one, of the magnolia, and do a watercolour in a totally different way, for a totally different reason. There are so many ways that I work. My style is very similar, in fact, that I work very loosely and then tighten up. Um, but I work in many different ways because it's choosing the right medium and method for the subject. So in this case, I'm going to do a very delicate watercolour um, and do... Uh, and do washes and glazes over the top of those with the petals and then a wet into wet background to make that out of focus so we've got the sharp edges in the foreground and the wet wet back. I'm using these stronger uh, sonnet watercolours, the Russian ones again this time. Normally for flower painting I use my Winter and Newton artist quality more delicate watercolours. Those are back in France now so I'm having to use these. Let's hope I can get the colours because I would normally have used some cobalt violet for this as well as the rose and so on. Um, and magentas. I haven't got those colours here so I'm going to have to try and use the colours that they've got and hope that they'll match. Um, a bit stronger, not quite as delicate, but it will show you the technique and I'll have some fun playing. Now, I had a very rude line from somebody the other day, which is most unusual because, as I say, most of you, nearly 8,000 of you now, are very polite and appreciate what I'm doing and sharing what I'm doing. Um, and it's lovely to share with you, and it's lovely to hear back from you as well and have your comments. And I try and do the work for you especially, and take this time like this to spend in addition in my life to doing the painting, to share everything with you so that you can enjoy and perhaps try it as well. And this rude woman, Maureen Ross, wrote, The words escape me, this is not art, fool's play. Now I find that extremely offensive actually, and it's, this is the first time I've ever made my own complaint back on YouTube. I've blocked that person. I've made that comment there, and I've left the comment up for you to see, it's on that last pastel one. Um, I find it so negative and so pointless. Um, I don't actually look at likes and dislikes, and I've disabled likes and dislikes on my films. I may, I may even make a little video especially about this soon, because um, I, 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 do, I do find it quite a, a difficult subject. Um, if you don't want to watch a film of mine, don't watch it. Why watch it and then complain later? For instance, if you're anti-field sports or don't like shooting, I clearly put on there, it's a part of my life, it's a very small part of my life, but it's a part of my life. This is not just an art channel. So only made a complaint there once saying, why have that on an art on a painting channel? It's not a painting channel. This is a channel about me. This is my life. This is me sharing the whole to a broad spectrum of people with open minds. It's not just for one type of person or one person with likes or dislikes, it's for everybody. And you take it or leave it. Um, if you like my paintings, that's fine. If you don't, don't watch what somebody else is. I paint in so many different ways. I hope I offer you something in some way, in whatever. We can't please everybody all of the time, only some people some of the time. And it's the same with art. Art is a very personal thing. And how dare this, how dare this person, Maureen, say this is not art or whatever. Who is she to say what art even is? It's a very personal thing, what we believe painting is, whether we like photographic work, whether we like impressionistic work. I like all sorts of work, a very broad spectrum of work, so I have a pretty open mind. So here we're going back now then to painting a more realistic scene perhaps, not quite photographic, but more to that way of, of, of being, um, whereas I also, as I say, love painting impressionistically. So as I say, uh, I don't look at um, likes and dislikes, if you wish to make a personal comment to me and not hide behind anonymity uh, with likes and dislikes, if you wish to say I like this, that's fine. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. It's nice it gives more impetus to actually do more work for you and assist and share. If you don't like something and there's a particular reason, by all means state it. If you're rude or belligerent, I'll simply block you. I can't be bothered with people that do that sort of thing and are so negative. We've got to, uh, to, you know, life is too short to waste on, on seeing people like that. And I think this person, Maureen Ross, has only made herself look a fool, um, talking about fool's play. If we don't play, if we don't explore, if we don't experiment, if we don't make a mess, if we don't make mistakes at times, we're never going to move on, we're never going to succeed. Um, we have to make failures and we have to try different things to do that. Um, I don't see how she can be so blinkered and narrow-minded as to feel that we don't 
uh, that fools play. Of course they play, of course we explore, that's what it's about. We're not just going to turn out one particular type of work all of our lives and never progress and never do anything differently. Uh, she's a fool herself. Anyway, by the by, I've had my little rant, which is the first time I've ever done that on a film, um, and I hope you enjoyed this particular film now on watercolour that I'm going to show you, and it uh, gives you some ideas maybe to try for yourself. But don't discount other ways of working. As I say, um, the other much more lively one, this piece, in fact, that I've got here, that I did previously, actually working out in Klein Air with the pastels, was so pleasurable for me to do, it was so enjoyable, and I think that that liveliness hopefully will show in the work itself. Here's something totally different. I'm going to say that one piece is better than another, it only means to say that something is preferable to you. So if you have a positive comment, I'd love to hear it. If you have a negative one, why even bother? If you don't like what you're seeing, go away, go somewhere else. And if you do like it, I'd love to hear from you. I've done my basic drawing, we've seen the photograph, and I've got my brushes set out here. And I'm not going to need all of these brushes, I do keep quite a selection of brushes, um, because we need various textures and surfaces in, in watercolour that um, need to be attained by having a, a fairly good selection of rakes and so on here, swords and so on. Probably all I'm going to need today is a wash brush, that oval mop of mine, one of my favourites. And I'm going to need a medium sized uh, round brush, so uh, let's see, what, not too fine I want, but that's a nice size to use for this as it's got, uh, a, nice, as it's got a nice point to it and, uh, and is big enough to do the work as well, man enough to do the work. And I can always use a finer brush if I need it for very fine stamens and so on. So let's get on with working from light to dark. Remember, we're not using white in watercolour. I'll just bring my paints down beside this so you can actually see what I'm mixing as I'm mixing. It's nice to have this little palette of the colours that come with the box there so I can see what I'm mixing. And I need a little mixing tray next to it as well. Okay, so as I was saying, I'm going to leave um, the background till the end and just get all of these uh, foreground areas. Um, of harder edges dealt with first, painting almost petal by petal. And I want to start off with some fairly cool colours. We've got some lovely light creams and we've got some um, light blues going on. I'm just going to touch my paint a little with this yellow and just start to find my way here with a very, very light tint of lemon yellow, first of all. Just going on. I want my lightest colours first then. So these very, very light tints I'm going to paint wet next to wet in many of these areas. Very, very pale, very light at first. Now I want to go to my cools and I want a cerulean blue. So that's going to be, according to this palette, a sort of turquoisey colour. Um, very, very light turquoise. So it's hard to see on these paints, that's why it's good to look at this. And I'm going to drop that down there into the shadow. Tones of cool coming down. I'm going to go variegated in just a moment. I want it to be slightly softer edge, so I'll take my wet brush and just dampen that edge down to soften it. Just going to soften that edge in a bit there. That's a hard edge I want there, so I want to leave that one. It's a soft edge I want here, so I'm going to soften that in. That's going to be soft there as well. It's quite strong going down to there. I know I want to drop in some washes. Now, a wash is this colour put straight on, and a glaze is when I put the colour over it. A glaze is transparent, watercolour is transparent, so if I put a glaze, a thin coat or a thin wash over a dried wash, it becomes something called a glaze, like coloured glass, and that allows you to see through it like coloured glass, and it will actually change colours. As if I put red thinly over yellow, then it would turn into an orange. I want to lift out again, so I want to take it off again. I can take a wet brush and just lift that out there to make it lighter again, just there. So we could paint a botanical painting very finely if we wanted to, using this technique, using watercolour pencils, and going into photographic detail. We can be a little bit looser, as I'm doing now with the watercolour, right down through this yellow here. We put in a very light tint of yellow earlier, dark under there, tone down through there, and already we're getting the the feeling of three dimension of this petal. A little bit of light shining through here and there, right down into there. This petal that comes up and over here is very light. Later. Right, I want to get some warmer colour now, so I need to find my very delicate um, 
roses. Let's check some of this Madder Lake and see if that will do it for me. I think it might do. I've got to go very thinly at first. So I'll just start to drop that in. But um, art is something that isn't just a reproduction or a mechanical thing. Um, art is something personal to somebody. Art is something making a statement. Art is feelings about things, about light, colour, materials, texture, mood, atmosphere. Art is so many things. There's no one thing that art is. There's no one good or bad art. There are certainly things that are bad art, I think, as in taste. But even that's, again, it is just personal taste, isn't it? Go again and go in here stronger. Just a tint over here, so I'm using the brush a bit more heavily to brush this right out and into there. Round here, I want most of this now to have a tint on it. So the sunshine's coming outside. It's been a funny old year so far, a very strange spring. Right, here we go down onto these then. We've got a bit of pink going on around there. It's very light inside here. It's of a slight touch of the, of the warmth coming through here. I've got a space here that should be green in a minute. Come down into this bit here. Nothing but these darks into here. And the way that that goes dark behind there. And then we can just gradually soften it out there so that it just blends in. And it's the same here. We've got quite a strong blue just there as well. Leaving a white edge, a light edge there. Quite subtle. Lighter edge there. Use the water again to soften it in here. So it just glazes in. This won't really show until I put the dark background in. Then it'll start to make more sense to you. And we're going to let these darks bring out the lights. So by putting these darks around here, by subtly bringing these darks up around, I'm picking out, they're called negative shapes, I'm picking out the lights. Use some of that red to glaze over down here. And I'm going to let the greens of the surrounding trees reflect in these leaves as well. Because it isn't just blues. So I'm just reflecting now some greens into the shadows. Those flowers are almost there and they're very pale and they won't really show until we do the darks behind them. But I think you're, hopefully you're getting the idea of what I'm doing and how. I've got to watch myself because I tend to start using oil techniques I'm not careful like I just tried to do with my finger there it's so tempting to do a quick bit of blending with your finger when it doesn't work quite the same with watercolour. Deliberately take a little bit of uh, some brighter reds just add them in just to give these cools uh, more of a chance so it, it'll make the cool red stand out a bit you see. Okay we'll let that dry off and then we'll look at the background. I'll just continue working down here a bit. Okay, we've done the delicate work. Now we can make or break it. I want to start putting in the, the darks around. What I'm going to do first is wet the paper around the whole flowers. It doesn't matter if it comes slightly over in places because it will blend it in. Blue-green at first and come in all the way around the picture with that. So we're leaving behind all the work we've done and these petals all the way down around. And I don't mind if it comes across this branch a bit because I've made it darker. If I'm quick enough I can just come across it without losing the branch or without washing it out. So it's just reflecting that colour a bit more. Right, on we go now with the warmer colours. I'll take some yellow ochre and drop that into there. Try to get these paints moving so they haven't been used before. I start dropping in the effects of an um, out of focus background here, letting the green just almost abstractly show through where I want it to. I don't want any white where there isn't white now. The white is going to be the flowers, and that's all. bit 
the light as it goes up towards the top here and then suddenly we should go even darker actually so trouble is it's drying very quickly in here to, today it's uh, very very warm in here and uh, this is drying almost too quickly for me to get it on before uh, ready I'm working on an angle here so we're going to get some trickling going on but hopefully we're getting the wet into wet effects in the background that we were after it dribbles all over the place we'll have some fun All we've got to do is pick out any details at the end. And it's pouring outside again, as you can hear. We could have approached this in all sorts of different ways. I could have made that background very, very pale. I could have made this very pale. But to be put it down for something stronger. I think we're about there with that. We'll let that dry off and have a quick look at it and um, go from there. I'm going to come back and take out some light areas. Just wet them with a the brush and lift out two bits that uh, like to be a bit lighter. Well, that'll do for that one. We'll just, just give you an idea of uh, another way of working. That's all it is, another way of working. Um, but the point is, how much personality has it got? And anybody can paint this technique, and they'll all look very much the same. This other painting over here, I did earlier, is totally mine, totally my technique, and is much more me. You have to consider what you're actually after, what the end product is you want. Is it going to be something very personal? Or is it something that masses can produce and is very impersonal? It's a nice piece of work, it's fun, it shows you a technique, but what's, what, if, you, if what you want to do, you're fine but very different pieces of work for very different reasons and for the love of the medium as well as the, the act of doing it, the fun. So there we are, close-ups of Colour. and you take your choice as to what you like or don't like. 